Let us start this lecture with a thought process. Towns in modern India should be planned in such a way that it must not only grow crops and produce most of the basic needs of all its inhabitants, while a cordial relationship with modern nature should be maintained uh, as in the ancient India. In the last lecture, we discussed about the town planning in the both first phase and the second phase of uh, civilization and we will continue today with the certain uh, other cities which were discussed in the last lecture like uh, Bijayapuri which is in Telangana and that flourishes uh, around 225 AD to 325 AD and this city was uh, found uh, during the excavation at Nagarjun Konda tank you know if you look at this is a very big uh, tank which was being uh, maintained by the people for the and use for water uh, you know for water and it had a well thought plan with a citadel and residential areas citadel is the place where the king and other palaces will be there citadel was fortified with a moat rampart and gate and other things and a tank with elaborate drainage system was having and houses with linear patterns with the roads. These roads were basically similar to what was found in Harappan civilization. I think that uh, process might be continuing till this period. And it had a amphitheater with a gallery on all sides and bathing ghats. If you look at the some of the remnants I have shown here, of course, near this Nagarjuna Konda tanks and of course, some portion will be there. It is made out of stone basically. Let us look at now the another uh, city which is uh, Arikamedu. Nowadays, it is known as Pondicherry and which flourished around 1100 to 1200 AD kind of thing. City was basically a trade center and who were having trades with the Roman Empire, which was established on the eastern bank of a lagoon formed by Aryan Kupam river around 3 kilometers from south of Pondicherry. It had 150 feet long oblong brick structure of a warehouse near the water levels, like I think uh, maybe some of these are warehouse where you can store the materials. Elaborate series of conduits and pavements of large stones were found in this excavated region and uh, indicating that these are maybe for the water transport and other things. An elaborate drainage system with the corbel wall flowed with the horizontal bricks were also found uh, in this site and which indicate that you know they are having a very good uh, uh, drainage system and sway system for the disposal of the uh, you know, garbages. And Warangal uh, is uh, in Telangana nowadays, earlier it was of course in Andhra Pradesh. This uh, city was uh, flourished around 1200 to 1400 AD during Kakata dynasty period. And I had happened to visit this place uh, maybe few years back, but I was not that much interested in this part of ancient technology. But I was thrilled to see these kind of gates which are made of granite stone and very good work you can see, very intricate work being done and how it was done really is interesting to look at because granite is very hard stone, difficult to manage. And it had four arched stone gates like shown here, the four sides of the fort. And um, which is of course, the fort was a cardinal points and four roads of city converged at the temple in the middle of the city. And I remember that there was a nearby mountain and mountain was having a staircase made of stone right from the there itself. And even today it is there and four freestanding portals leading into this temple and there is a very good if you look at these are elephants and very nice intricate works are there and there are several other things and I had also seen at that time that there is a 
uh, tank, water tanks made of stones and there was also uh, well which is uh, uh, having uh, linings where the uh, stones. So, how they had put it and make it, uh, made it is a really very important thing one has to think at that time. So, Bijanagar Empire which is a Karnatak and uh, it was around something from 1400 and AD. Uh, you might be knowing the Krishna Devarai, who was a very well known uh, king of Vijayanagara Empire. And uh, capital city uh, known as Hampri was found in eastern bank of Tungabhadra river, right. And these are the some remnants of that uh, capital or the palace, which is having lot of stones. And these are the uh, part of the palace where maybe some you know meant for some kind of a hall or something because a lot of pillars you could see. It had a massive fortification for elliptic zone around 400 kilometer along its axis. And uh, enough evidence of drainage systems, roads, residential and sieving buildings, irrigation systems were found in this excavation site. On the southwestern side a cluster enclosed by high granite walls, royal palace, treasury, temples, column halls, this is a one I think part of it and water tower, tanks and wells were found. That means, it is very clearly can be concluded that this city was well planned and then it was really uh, good and then lot of design might have gone into uh, forming this city and also maintaining it. So, literally evidence if you look at Mm, there are uh, several texts available on town planning in medieval period and some of these are Briya Sanita, Maya Mata, Manasara, Yukti, uh, Kalpataru, Samarangana, Sutradhar, Sukracharya, Niti Sastra and several others you, even you will find those texts today. And uh, the Manasara, a work of 11th century AD is exhaustive data is on town planning which we will be discussing some of the features of this Manasara. As to the Manasara, these uh, cities would be built near the river, sea or mountain with the provision of trade and commerce. And roads would be laid from east to west or north to south as per the site requirements. And smallest town has around 100 into 200 cubits according to his classification. Cubits, I have already discussed, one cubit will be around 0.45 meter. Big town has something 7200 into 14000 cubits area. And eight types of uh, towns what uh, this Manasara had identified, one is Rajdhani, Nagara, Pura, Nagari, Kheta, Kharbata, Kubjaka and Patana. So, these are also various kinds of cities you know. And Nagara are the high concentrated walls with watch towers massive gates, strong doors and uh, moat filled with water, crocodiles extra, these are meant for protecting the fort and streets are lighted with torches. The main topics covered on the town planning in Mayamata and Manasara are Bhumi Pariksha, I mean basically examination of land, which land will be you know suitable for having a city and Bhumi Sang Samgraha is basically selection of the town site, Dik Pariche Cheda, determination of cardinal point that means where your citadel will be there kind of things. So, that will be cardinal point of the city and uh, Padabinyasha, surveying, mapping of areas, marking into square and rectangle because that is being preferred for the making houses, Bali Karma Vidhana that sacrifice of offerings. I mean there is a ritual which was there uh, till I think some years back when we are having these rituals. Grama Nagara Binyasa, village and town planning, Bhumi Binyasa, construction of storied buildings, Gopura Vidhana, construction of gateways, how to make, what are the material, all those things. Raja Veshma Vidhana, that means construction of king's palace. Palace can be somebody else, but king's palace is very important and then also uh, intricate in uh, design. Mandava Vidana, construction of temple. Of course, I will be not discussing in this lecture about temples because it is quite vast and uh, we would not be doing that. 
and uh, several persons namely Gradyapati that minister of town planning, Tapati master architecture, Sutra Garika surveyor, Takshaka chief carpenter and Vardika carpenter. In hierarchical orders you know are to be uh, employed and then they are the people who design the buildings of the towns and uh, they will be also executing, they will be responsible for that. It very clearly says that in modern, as in modern times, at that time also the you know set of engineers were there, these are basically engineers who were doing. Types of town topology in ancient India, several of them mentioned in this book. One is Dandaka, Sarvathobhadra, Nandyabhatta, Padmaka, Swastika, uh, Prastara, Karmuka, Chaturmuka and uh, several some of these things we will be discussing about that. If you look at Dandaka is uh, looks like this, like uh, this is a topology of a city. If you look at uh, this is your uh, northern gate, this is a one gate here and similarly eastern gates here and there might be a citadel in somewhere in the town office and uh, this shape if you look at is basically rectangular or can be square shape. And the uh, roads, these are roads, these are basically roads, straight roads and these two are bigger roads, you know, it will be crisscrossing these roads. And these are by lengths, right, and width of this street varies from 1 to 5 danda and 2 uh, tra transverse street at the extremities have single rows of house. If you look at these rows are single rows of house and this will be one road also, this is also road. And Devi temple is located outside the village, whereas the Devta temple is in the northern portion of the city. Even today you will find lot of cities is having Devis uh, at the entrance of the village or a city and that culture is still today we are having. Sarvato Bhadra city will be like that. If you look at this, uh, you know, arrow, if I am putting, it is basically northern side, right? And this is your eastern side, and uh, this is having one gate here, and there is another gate here. There is another gate, four gates basically. But beside this, in the corner, you are having also small passages where people can live. And this type of uh, town plan mean particularly for square sites or a um, rectangular sites that can be used for larger villages in town, not for small one. As per the, this plan, the entire town should be fully occupied by the houses uh, of various distribution inhabited by all classes of people. That means, there is no segregation between classes, except these places that might be for some fortifications or some other things which will be there, except at the periphery maybe warrior people or classes will be there to protect the city or maybe it will be taken by the king who will be protecting the city or administrator, city administrator. Uh, Nanda Bartha is uh, basically name of a flower, the form of uh, which is followed in this layout. This will be one kind of layout which will be uh, Nanda Bartha is a circular in nature. At the center there will be temple. Of course, at the center also the uh, chief administrator or the king will be residing. There will be of course, presiding deity uh, in the center of the town. And if you look at this is the road, main roads here and similarly this is crossing. And beside this there will be say other roads which are meeting at this temple. And these are small lanes which are parallel to each other, you know that is a parallel to this side, that is a very interesting part, you know, right. These are parallel, similarly this is parallels. This is generally adopted also for square, if you look at this is the square size kind of things and here in the center there will be, you know, temple and also the people who are controlling the city or the administrator will be there. And here of course, uh, these are the roads and this is good suitable around something 3000 to 4000 houses. Of course, in today you cannot adopt that because 
people will think about 30,000 to 40,000 houses. And as I told that streets run parallel to the central joining streets, you know, these are the things, because lanes are connected to the main uh, streets. And there is a Padmaka, which is similar to the petal of lotus and radiating outwards from the center, this is your center. And this was uh, practice for building town with the fortress all around. These are will be the basically fortress walls, right, or for fortification. And city used to be practical an island surrounded by water, where you can have having no scope for expansion. Therefore, the city has been made in such a way. Of course, uh, these are you know we need to look at it where it was lying. I remember that Shivaji, the Chhatrapati Shivaji had made some kind of a, a city inside the island. Maybe it is of that shape, I do not know, you can cross check that. Swastika is another one which is uh, similar to the, you know, earlier things in a rectangular and these are having diagonal, uh, you know, streets dividing into certain rectangular plots. These are the, you know, rectangular plots if you look at people can be leaving that. So, um, if you look at this, these are the main roads, this is the one gate here and uh, if you look at this road will be like this, one can think of joining here and to this gate, there is another gate here also, right. Similarly, one can think of this is like a swastik, these are the roads, okay this looks to be like a swastik kind of symbol. Two main street each other at the center, this is your center and running south to north and uh, west to east, site would be restricted to square and rectangular because that can fit into this. A rampant wall surround the town with a moat as its foot filled with the water. Prastara will be having a, what you call a similar in this shape, rectangular shape or maybe square. It does not suit for triangular or circular shape. Main roads are much wide, if you look at these are the main roads and that side, right. Of course, this is the center. These are of course, the main gates, gate here, this is the northern side, this is the eastern side one gate here, one gate there, but these might be small passages. And if you can look at that, uh, these are bigger plots, means you know it can be occupied by the rich people, that is the what one can guess. And these are the little bit smaller, of course, this is the next size, right, which will be for the middle class. This may be also middle class, this may be the poor class kind of things, poor class in the sense maybe from economically. The town may or may not be surrounded by a fort, this is the what being talked about Prastara. And there is a Karmuka, which is a very half circle kind of things and this kind of plan is suitable for seesaw the river bank, because one side would not be there and it can be circular in shape because it can, this is a half circle and these are also gate kind of things. The main streets, uh, you know, run from north to south east to that is all right and, and street divide the entire area in blocks. So, these are the streets and these are lanes and these places of course, you can have a house and it will be connected to the main lanes and this is, you know, is the place where uh, all people will come meet and maybe you are having a business center here in the center and so also in this there might be a street also here this time. And generally present is a commonly Devi is installed in the temple building in any convenient place. And Chaturmuko of course, is a uh, from name itself there will be four gates, this is a northern gate, this is the eastern gate and then this will be southern gate and western gate here. And these are having equal sizes houses, of course, the side one are the largest size land areas, which will be meant for maybe for the administrative people to manage this uh, city properly or from the or the protect the city from the enemies. This side can be used for the square or rectangular having four 
faces or the four um, gates. So, generally in the temple, you know, is being considered nearby the center kind of things where there might be a temple where people will come and do pujas. So, uh, we have seen that various kinds of town planning, you know, in the literature. Of course, I have shown you very few of them, but some of these town planning or the layout can be utilized today in the present context also and it has to be done properly, right. Let us look at the material use for construction of ancient India. As we have already learned that several material like stone, bricks, mortars, plasters, wood, timbers, iron, other metals were used in ancient time. And uh, bricks, if you look at uh, in ancient India is very old. Let me tell you that brick wells is the Harappan time. This is the well which uh, we had, uh, we will be seeing and also uh, later on. And this is the falcon fire altar, which is used in Vedas for uh, making yagyas and other things, right. And this is the brick temple during Gupta period. It is nearby in Kanpur in Bhitar Gaon, which is still existing because I had visited uh, this place uh, maybe two years back and uh, it is quite interesting temple and made out of brick, not stone. And uh, bricks, if you look at the, in the Sanskrit word istika, denotes brick, which means comfort and giving uh, or a well-being kind of things. On being burnt, then mud blocks by fire was turned into baked brick. Of course, uh, according to the Satapata Brahman in Veda, sage Angirasa was the authority on brick making. And uh, bricks were used as I told in Indus Valley civilization and Vedic periods and later on also even today we are using bricks. Bricks if you look at is mainly made from the clay with of course, natural impurities of the soil like quartz, calcite, kaolinite, organic materials and other things, right. And uh, suitability of the clay for the brick depends on the nature of minerals which is there uh, in the clay and also the shape of uh, the size of the grains, presence of soluble salts and organic materials, you know, that is a very important thing one has to look at it. For enhancing plasticity, several other materials like fine sand, slags, organic materials like rice husk, chopped straw and other things are usually added. According to Jadurveda, Sanita and Satavata Brahmana, hair of goats, very fine sand, pounder rocks and iron fillings are mentioned to be added for enhancing the plasticity of clay for making bricks. But of course, these are the thing has to be tested whether that is true or not. But however, some of the materials can be even still used like your fine sand which is being used today. Buddha and Sulabh Sutras mention about use of uh, Ukhya Bhasma, basically as you know as additive for making the bricks. So, several types of bricks namely rectangular, square, wedge shaped, L shaped, even light weighted, decorated, inscribed bricks are being mentioned in the various text. If you look at these are various shapes, even the square, rectangular, this is a trapezoidal, this is a L shape. I will be discussing about that in the particularly when you use, uh, when you make these wells, you need to have a trapezoidal uh, bricks and also when you make a arc, the brick you know size and shape should be congruent with the align properly, otherwise it would not uh, align properly. And if it would not align, it will fall down. So, therefore, those kind of sizes has to be you know made and also how we can do today, we cannot do because we do not know how to make ourselves brick, the company or the industry will do, industry will not make according to our wish, according to our design. Earlier days I remember that brick uh, was basically uh, being uh, designed and developed in rural areas by the people. Even like lightweight bricks found in Ramapa temple at Palampet in AP, Sikhara is of low density that even can float in water. 
how you can make because generally clay mixed with limestone, sawdust, extra when burnt will be releasing carbon dioxide become porous and become lighter and that kind of things were there earlier days you know and today you won't find that kind of bricks. And uh, process of uh, bricks or tile making is being uh, you know mentioned in the Silparatna and uh, one has to select the suitable site and collection, collection of soil because the soil uh, has to be taken from the particular site and the site has to be selected. Uh, one has to uh, weight the you know soil and then add whatever the ingredients having, mix it properly and then knead it for making bricks. Hand molding of the bricks uh, were being used earlier days, it must be sun dried and uh, kiln has to be prepared and for firing of bricks. Uh, cooling and quenching of bricks is very important because you cannot really you know remove as it is. The rate of cooling is important for getting a good quality bricks. It has been mentioned in silver sasta and uh, there is a, some standard has to maintain if it is not meeting the standard then it has to be rejected. There is a also way of testing the bricks and classification and qualities of the brick also has to be taken care uh, while you are doing that. So, suitable soil selection for bricks what people have talked about is something four types of uh, soil uh, color wise it is basically white is the best because plasticity will be better, red is good and yellow if you look at is average and black is the worst for making bricks and according to that is your uh, Bistu Dhar Motar Purana. Uh, this is three volumes uh, one Dr. Priyavala Sa has uh, you know translated from Sanskrit to the English. Clay soil must be able to show several properties that can be useful for making bricks. Plastic when mixed with water that is very important and it must have enough tensile strength to keep it safe. Clay particle must not fuse together because then it will be brittle in nature right. So, uh, ancient brick clean if you look at uh, was mainly for clamping of bricks and tiles in a pile then burning together in the kiln and temperature clean uh, around 200 uh, degrees Celsius was used earlier time even today also by with the help of uh, burning the twigs of trees like people, khadir, palas, any other trees you know as a matter of fact. Maybe uh, why it, uh, they, they are mentioned that has to be looked at and uh, this is the typical what you call I have shown in ancient time people are doing even some areas they do. Uh, there is a hole where they will be using this locks of wood for burning and they will be uh, having these things uh, what you call mud uh, walls being done. And uh, even uh, I, I am aware that in uh, using the cow dung, people could bake these uh, potteries and maybe I do not know whether people use uh, cow dung for baking the bricks or not. Of course, in modern times smoke pipes were kept in the kiln, but uh, there might be some kind of a smoke pipes at that time, maybe just a hole and bricks or tiles are allowed to bake for about 10 to 15 days. And this technology is still used in rural areas of India, Africa and many other to produce bricks on small scale, but nowadays it is not there because when I was a kid I had seen a, a brick uh, kiln in, in uh, my village, but today it is not there and people do not know how to also make a kiln of themselves. Still today in India, uh, this production of the bricks you know by uh, local traditions is around 20 percent some people claim, but I am little doubtful about it. And it is um, of course, considered to be inefficient process by certain expert as it lacks thermal insulation and also the burning may not be that good. Uh, those things you know like is one has to look at it when you want to revive this kind of technology, uh, one has to also improvise it because there is a um, break in the transfer of knowledge from the previous generation to the next generation. There might be a lot of problem with that as we see today. 
and the brick bunds, if you look at there are several kinds it is mentioned in the text. Toda or Pati is a basically third uh, kind of things and uh, Toda means if you look at uh, is a basically third layer joining. If you look at uh, this is the one brick right and this, this is the second one, this is second layer and another layer will be uh, this one. That means, the, this brick layer, brick thing is being repeated here, the joining here you know is repeated in the third layer. Similarly, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, ninth, twelfth, fourteenth kind of thing, various names are given here like uh, Malali, uh, Brahmaraj, Pancha Parva, Puk Parva, Dev Sandhi, Swanna and Dandaga. I think these names are in Marathis. If you look at in English, it goes by that. I will show you some of them fifth layer. That means, if you have this uh, laying of the bricks for the wall in such a way that this will be the joint, let us say these two bricks, you know, will be repeated after the fifth layer. That means, if you do that, then it will be strength will be much higher. But unfortunately, we are only using the third layer kind of thing today. We do not, I have never seen that fifth layer people are using. Even like if you look at the seventh layer, which will be uh, this kind of repetition will be coming in the at the seventh layer. Similarly, uh, ninth, twelfth and fourteenth, you know one has to find out where you can use. You cannot really use this uh, higher, you know, layer in all the walls. So, therefore, these things uh, can be looked at in details and then also find out its utility and so that strength of the wall can be enhanced. So, a uh, mortar can be uh, defined as material used for cementing bricks, stones kind of things we know, while plaster is a material used for coating the walls. right? In ancient time, mud was used as a universal mortars and plasters as we had seen in the rural housing lectures. Gypsums, lime mortars or the plasters were, were used since the Indus Valley civilization and uh, even the light grey color gypsum cement were used in Arapan buildings what people have found out. Lime and mud mortars were used in Kosambi uh, in 600 BC 200 AD in Gupta periods. And uh, composition of uh, the gypsum and the lime in plasters and mortar in from Arapan Moinje that if you look at the in the mortar you will find something 74.12 percentage gypsum and uh, calcium carbonate 2.5 and uh, magnesium carbonate nil and then sand and clay is around 20.41 uh, percent alkaline salt 1.18. Of course, moisture will be there. So, this is the kind of things Mahinjada. Of course, if you go to Harappa, it is changing, it is different, you know. The sand and clay is almost double, right, and there is a less amount of gypsums. But if you look at uh, these main drains of the Sesson Mahinjada, if you look at this uh, calcium carbonate is more and uh, there is a magnesium carbonate comes into pictures and maybe the sand and clay is the little higher size kind of things. So, one has to say that it is not the same, it is different proportion coming, but the most of the materials are similar in nature. Uh, these people have uh, you know uh, tested it with the taking the samples from the Mahinjada and Harappa, Harappan site and this is from the uh, Kosambi. Uh, the people have tested it. Let us say these are sample 1, sample 3, 5, 7, there are several samples, I have taken only few of them and sand is something 33.43 and slaked lime that is 41.11, 3 by 4 is the ratio of being used. Uh, it may be used for uh, basically um, as a mortar kind of things where uh, for the plaster maybe it is used 39.1 to 37.09 kind of things 1 is to 1. No, no sorry this may be used the 1 is to 1 might be used for the uh, for the mortar and 3 is to 4 might be used for plaster right. Similarly, for this fifth one may be used for for mortar right. 
and this is used also maybe for uh, kind of a motor. So, various ratios are being used for this motors and cluster in COSMB and uh, several data you can get out of it. So, let us look at the how one can prepare the lime and motor and excavation of lime stone from the underground mines has to be undertaken and one has to calcinate it by burning of lime stones and uh, one has to quench it with water to obtain a slake lime. Of course, the sieving of the material to remove stones and other input is also important. Lime mortar is prepared by mixing lime with sand. Pulverization uh, is may be required for lime mills to obtain the mortar and this uh, is may be done by manually and as per the Brigishanita. They have also mentioned about various sand sizes for lime mortars. This is Karal is a hirida seed size and Mugadi is a green gram seed size, they have mentioned that way and Gulmasi medium size sand, Kalk is the Bengal gram floor size, Chikna is a fine silt. So, they have uh, you know developed their uh, way of specifying the size of giving the example of various seeds so that they can utilize you know keep that in mind not like in present day you know some mm kind of and according to the Mayamath chapter 18. And uh, there is a various grades of lime, the first class is the of course, sets quickly even in water, second class sets slowly in water and third class sets slowly, I mean little bit will take more time, fourth class will be uh, not be setting at all, that is the kind of limes they have graded. And if you look at one can think of kiln for calcination, like they will be using the wood and charcoal here by layer by layer, these are the limestones. And uh, they will be heating uh, by putting this something uh, wood fire and then heating it and then the gases will be going out that way carbon dioxide and they will be maintaining something 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius when you will meet this calcium carbonate will be converted to CaO calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Calcium oxide will be coming in contact with the water, it will going to the calcium hydroxide. Once it is there, then you can use uh, add this sand and then uh, you can use for masonry purposes. Traditional small scale batch type lime kiln is also used earlier and which is known as Ulai in Tamil Nadu. Let me show you a scheme here. It is basically made out of bricks and then in this case the wood and charcoal along with the limestone will be placed and then it will be heated from the top kind of things and then it will be converted into slag lime. So, we will see that uh, plaster and wall preparation for paintings, uh, very special materials for the plaster to be used on the wall, uh, particularly when you are trying to paint it. And uh, as I mentioned the book that is Vishnu uh, uh, Dhar Motor Purana, this case material technique for such applications and plaster used on the walls of Ajanta caves, Sirgira caves and Ba caves were created using might be such techniques what is mentioned, but still more research has to be uh, you know done to find out. In addition to the plasters, the technique of producing different colors uh, were elaborated and a lot of research is going on particularly this Ajanta caves like uh, people are saying this plaster will be having clay, cow dung, stone powder, rice husk and lime. And people are saying that uh, these paints are remaining because of this speciality and also in recent time uh, somebody uh, did research and claimed that the tobacco was being used in the Ajanta paint so that it has uh, still been there intact. So, uh, in the Sirgaria caves like tempered clay, kaolin, rices, coconut cell fibers and lime were used and the bark caves red clay, green gram, lime and jute are being used for the plasters and kind of thing. And um, therefore, you know lot of things we can uh, learn from these things and 
can use in even today and we can revive those things, but more research is required. Let us conclude that what we can learn from the past and utilize and at least conceptual wise. What we need to do that basically indigenous architecture generally works in close access with mother nature and sustainability eco friendly is the part and parcel of the ancient uh, buildings and also the town planning. Local materials can be used while improving the skill of local people because when you do that then you know skill will be there with the people and they can uh, in be more innovative and then utilize it their creative power. And building technology and town planning must be indigenous based on the local ecology tradition and culture which is not the case today. Right. Traditional knowledge systems should be preserved more research should be carried out to implement the old knowledge in the present context. Proper amalgamation of passive cooling techniques in modern buildings can be made such that it can reduce the energy consumption which I did not cover, but I must tell you that I am having certain data people have conducted in the ancient uh, you know way of making house and which can even you know maintain the comfortable temperature after the global warming. So, we must adopt instead of just going for the air conditioner and other systems. So, with this uh, we will uh, stop over here. In the next lecture, we will be discussing about basically how to conserve the water and also how to manage the water in proper way for irrigation and other things. So, that we would not face problem in modern time using the ancient technology and knowledge. Thank you very much.